Thank you. Um, yes, so I'm Louise Phillips. I'm an educator, educator and researcher specialising in perinatal mental illness. For those of you that don't know what that is, um, it's mental illness occurring around the time of pregnancy. Um, I've got to remember to do these slides as well. So I'm, I work in uh, the School of Health Sciences at City University. Um, as you can see, we offer lots of sort of health-based um, courses. And I'm particularly involved in the pre-registration um, and midwifery courses and the post-registration as well, sort of teaching and supervision at MSc and PhD level. So in this presentation, I want to discuss the role of research in relation to perinatal mental illness. But first, I want to emphasise the role of education. So just t so we've had a stand here today, so I don't know, we didn't have any sweets on our table, so I don't know if uh, you passed by without... Uh, but um, we offer two mental health MSc programmes in the School of Health Sciences. So I'm programme director for the adult mental health MSc, and we also run the uh, a child and adolescent mental health um, MSc as well. So our, our modules, very briefly, just to say, in the adult mental health MSc, we do sort of assessing, understanding mental health problems, contemporary issues in mental health, including patient safety. The child and adolescent mental health MSc includes focus upon psychological development of the child and early identification and, of course, child protection, which, of course, you know, as you know, is very topical. Um, so we, um, you know, these two programmes really want to aim to expand the capacity of students to practice collaboratively. And I think this, you know, is important in mental health services and particularly perhaps in perinatal mental health services as well. Because obviously services aim to meet the needs of children and adults, parents, families, require the crucial interagency, interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary approach. Okay. Um, so we encourage our students to do a number of things, really. We, we want them to think about and understand the differing definitions of collaborative working, because you know, you can say or work collaboratively, but what does that actually mean? It means different things to different people. And also to define the roles and boundaries within organisations. And the interesting stuff is about exploring the defences and dynamics of interprofessional practice. How often professionals, practitioners, really defend their... Um, their uh, the camera, <laughs> the, uh, the, the prof their professional backgrounds. And I think it's interesting with, with mental health nursing, uh, we've, you know, we've offered diploma courses and now we offer degree and postgraduate diploma courses. So the sort of identity and status of nursing is beginning to change, which is interesting. Um, I, just in terms of research, um, I'm a member of this centre at City University. I just wanted to tell you about it. So it's the Centre for Maternal and Child Health Research. We recognise the very close relationship between maternal and child health and the role of health services. And our research, again, that sort of interagency, multidisciplinary focus uh, that's what our research is focused upon, to provide rigorous evidence to inform services and policy. So um, the group within that centre, um, we do three key things really. We identify the mental health needs of women and their families during pregnancy and after birth. We want to improve the screening of women for mental health distress, difficulties before pregnancy, during pregnancy and after, and that we want to develop innovations in the delivery of mental health care 
and treatment. So just, I won't read these out, but just if you want to look at some of our recent publications there in the centre. Let's give you a short time to do that. Okay. And just a note about the first publication, really, because there's rightly so a lot of emphasis on postnatal depression, but, I, but Susan Ayres, who's the professor at City, you know, acknowledges that also postnatal anxiety and other experiences are also very important. So before I go on to tell you about some of my research, I just want to um, share my thoughts about um, mental health nurse training and tell you a bit about my background, which you've heard. I trained in an old asylum as a registered mental nurse that we, we were called then. Um, and I have a particular interest in women's mental health. Um, but I'm, I'm particularly interested in enabling students, really, to work effectively and to critically engage with the reality of mental health practice, um, which sometimes means working with hopelessness. Um, we offer weekly personal and professional development groups, which are unique to City University, unique to our mental health nursing courses. And these encourage our students to think, and I want our students to think, not just do things, um, to think about the, the impact of mental health practice on their well-being and to think about their responses and what they mean. So, for example, thinking about women's mental health, for example. You know, we're, my mental health students often pick up the dislike of working in women-only mental health areas. They say, you know, nobody likes it, women are difficult. There's staff who have very high burnout working in this area. So we say, well, what are those assumptions, opinions about? Where do they come from? Um, and what would you say to a woman patient who wishes to become a mother, but the staff around you are all, are all concerned about her ability to be a mother? And if you're caught up with stereotypes about what a good mother, what a good woman should be, that we're all very exposed to. But I'm delighted to say that one of my early students, who's now, uh, she's a matron in a, in a women-only forensic area, she says that she adores the landscape of women's mental health. And I've always remembered that, that that sounds very, very positive. OK, so... Um, just tell you a little bit about um, my research and just completed a study and we've submitted it for publication and I'm honoured to say that I work with one of the few specialist mental health midwives who's here today and we've our study was really quite it's quite a small study really with 12 women who have um, a pre-existing diagnosis of mental illness and we wanted to ask them about their expectations and experiences of um, their first booking appointment. So that booking appointment is where they're asked about their mental health backgrounds or any mental health experiences. We found several themes. Um, we found, for example, that the women tend not to have very much information from perhaps primary care services, GPs, about their first antenatal appointment. Also, at the actual booking appointment, the women said there's almost too much information. There's such a focus upon physical care. And one of them described that the questions about mental illness were rather an add-on. So that was a very interesting finding for us. But one of the themes that we really want to develop further um, was in relation to several participants who had diagnoses including bipolar disorder 
who were at risk of relapse um, during their pregnancies and postnatally, stated that some of the midwives um, didn't seem to know very much about the peri perinatal mental health services. So we picked up a kind of lack of joined up working between these two services. And I also want to say how positive the women were about midwives and how the midwives had very, sort of very good skills. So in terms of the policy content, um, so many policy documents, and these are just some examples, always, you know, always state the importance of collaborative working, joined up working, and here are some examples. Um, just for you to look at those, I won't read them out. Okay. So at the moment, in light of the um, you know, recommendations for better joined up working, particularly between maternity, antenatal services <coughs> and um, perinatal mental health services, we're planning a, a, a follow on study and we're thinking about a possible case study approach, um, which, we, which uh, we found quite interesting because you can do several case studies so you can I don't know, interview midwives, commissioners, and the services can be cases as well, antenatal services, and so on. So we might use semi-structured interviews, we might use some focus groups, um, and we might make observations about the interactions between the different professionals within certain settings. So we want to ask, how do antenatal and perinatal mental health services work together in the care of women? What works well? Um, you know, what is it that's effective? Um, and our proposed, the proposed improvements in, in perinatal mental health care is that we will be kind of providing a response to policy and research recommendations, as you've just seen that list of examples from policy. And really, in, in most of the recommendations, um, the, there is a focus on midwives receiving lots of training. Midwives must receive training about mental health. So we would have an opportunity to you know, have a look at that training. How effective is it? And also gain insight into what midwives perceive as working well. They're in routine practice. You know, they're the ones that do the job, as it were and then gain some understanding of the barriers. What doesn't work? What is it that isn't working well between, between services? Um, and just coming back to the sort of po policy documents, really, that the NICE guidelines recommend that future research should cover the degree of integration, integration of services, and there should be common protocols the Boots Family Trust Alliance uh, recommended that commissioners need information on, about best practice and um, in order to commission effective services. So it's essential for researchers really to collaborate with commissioners and policy makers in this area. And that's why I'm here today. So thank you for listening. <laughs>